Welcome to this Officials Education Association football training video. The purpose of the training videos is to illustrate examples of rule application and judgment. Most plays are examples of correct rule application and officiating. Plays are selected based on applicable rule and mechanics points. No play is intended to embarrass any player, coach, school, or official. The topic of this video is forward progress. When a ball is in player possession, forward progress is the foremost point of the ball when the player is held so that he stops moving forward or anything other than the runner's hand or foot touches the ground. A player or ball in player possession is out of bounds and forward progress is stopped when any part of the player or the ball touches anything that is out of bounds except another player or an official. On this play we are looking at forward progress by the fullback on a run to the sideline. Now we see the defender engage the tackle at the 35. But the running back spins and continues moving forward and fighting for yardage to the 37 and is then tackled inbounds at the 37 yard line. The runner was not down until the 37 yard line and we also see that the runner was down inbounds so the wing official correctly ruled that the play ended at the 37 and the clock continued to run. On this play we're looking at forward progress on a run to the left side by the fullback. Now after the defense attempted a tackle at the 31 yard line the runner runs back up the field to the 41 in an attempt to escape the defense. Because the runner was not in the grasp of a defender and was not being driven back up field by the defender, the correct progress spot on this is as ruled at the 41 yard line. The runner went back up the field voluntarily and not under the control of a defender. One other point to note on this play, we do have a holding foul at the 29 yard line. Consider not throwing that flag immediately and looking at the result of the play before throwing the holding foul. On this play we're looking at the forward progress spot on a pass to the wide receiver at the top of the screen. Pass is caught at the 44 yard line and then the defender drives the receiver backward and out of bounds. The line of scrimmage official correctly rules that the progress spot is in bounds because the defender drove the receiver backward and out of bounds so the clock continues to run and the ball was placed at the 44 yard line. On this play we're going to get several views of a run to the left side by the tailback. The issue is whether the tailback is down at the 15 yard line or whether forward progress continues to the 11 yard line. Now in the second view we see that the runner is initially engaged in a tackle but escapes it. The second defender comes in and attempts a tackle and the runner places both his hand and wrist on the ground in order to stabilize himself and continue moving forward. We know that the rule says that the runner is down when anything other than his hand or foot touches the ground. The player was ruled down here at the 16 yard line because his wrist touched the ground. If you take a broader reading of the rule and the wrist being part of the hand, then the proper ruling would have been to rule that the forward progress was not stopped at the 16 yard line, but was instead stopped at the 11 yard line.
On this play, we're looking at the forward progress spot on a run to the middle of the field. While the defense attempts a tackle at the 42-yard line, they're not able to bring the runner to the ground. He's able to spin out of the tackle and continue up the field to the 39-yard line where he goes to the ground there. The 39-yard line is the proper progress spot. On this play, we're looking at the forward progress spot on a pass to the sideline. Note that this is a backward pass followed by a forward pass, which is perfectly legal. The receiver catches the ball inbounds at the 47-yard line and then is driven out of bounds by the defender during the tackle. The wing in this case correctly ruled forward progress at the 47-yard line and also ruled that the catch and forward progress spot were inbounds and had the clock continue running. This play is a good example of why we need to maintain spacing and watch runners carefully when they're on or near the sideline. We see the quarterback take the snap and decide to run the ball and then runs to the sideline. He steps out of bounds not once but twice at the 50-yard line and is given forward progress to the 45-yard line. Now the line of scrimmage official was too far downfield and didn't see the step out of bounds. The referee actually got too close to the play and was not able to see either step out on the sideline. This play is an example of both forward progress and clock management. Note the situation. Second and six at the 42-yard line, 29 seconds left to go in the half with the clock running. The offense is going to want to get the first down and get the ball out of bounds to stop the clock. After a short pass, the runner runs up the field and then turns and dives out of bounds in order to stop the clock. Now because the defense had not stopped the runner's forward progress in bounds and engaged a tackle, the runner voluntarily chose to turn and dive out of bounds. This play should have been ruled dead at the 48 yard line and the clock should have been stopped because the runner was out of bounds. This play has three views of forward progress on a sweep to the line judge's sideline. As the running back gets near the sideline, it's important to track feet to make sure that the running back does not step out of bounds as he goes up the field. Now in the second view, other than the blatant hold by number five right in the middle of the screen, we see that the running back maintains both feet inbounds all the way to the five yard line and is then pushed out by a defender. And the third view confirms that the running back did not step out of bounds until he reached the five yard line. This play is three views of a quarterback rolling out to a left with a throw followed by a run after catch. The primary point of this video clip is the position of the line judge. The play starts at the 31 yard line and we find the line judge for the first time on the play at nearly the 50 yard line. There's absolutely no reason for the line judge to be 20 yards downfield ahead of this play. Critical point being right here at the 42 where there's a potential step out of bounds and the line judge is looking back up the field at the play. The line judge should have been positioned between 7 and 8 yards trailing this play so he can see whether there was a step out at the 42 and then continue on up the field with the play.
Thank you for watching this Officials Education Association football training video. For additional resources, please go to our YouTube channel. There are additional training videos and our video clip library. You can also submit questions to oea4training at gmail.com.